So the wind's out and the wind's out, the sun is out and the wind is down. So it's perfect time for me to nip outside and give you a tour of the back garden and the front garden and the side of the house. Quite a lot going on, although we are in a kind of real transition mode between the winter crops and the spring and summer crops, but it still looks okay. Let's have a look. So I've got lots going on in the conservatory, but this is really about their garden tour. So we've got a quick zip round here. It's quite a cold day, but I've still got all my seedlings out on my little grow bench. They enjoy it out here a lot more than in the conservatory, just so much brighter sunlight, even though it is a bit of a chilly wind. Most of them are okay. I don't have the tomatoes out at the moment. So we've got green garlic in these tubs all the way around here and down there as well. As I say, loads of seedlings. First lattices outside, just under this lightweight fleece. They're coming on quite nicely. Obviously loads of lattices on the allotment still under cover. This is our main named garlic bed. So 90% of the garlic we grow, we've no idea what variety it is because it's just replanted from year to year. We've kind of lost track of what it is. So this year we just bought named varieties and put them in there and that will provide our seed stock for next year. So that when people say, what is that garlic? I'll actually be able to tell you. So we've still got these beautiful kales. So obviously they're all going to seed at the moment. We eat all these seed heads, of course. These are really lovely. And still really lovely leaves on these. These are just a green curly kale, Carvalho Nero, Pentland Brig. I'm not quite sure what this one is. Sympathic or something like that. And some more green curly kale, some Brussels going to seed, and the collets. And they've still got really nice collets on the stems of these, um, which we're still eating. But we've also got lovely leaves. So these are gorgeous leaves, and these are gorgeous seed heads. So the collets just keep on giving, and a, and a fantastic harvest. And they will do for a few more weeks yet. And by then, the early kales that we've got on the allotment under cover will be ready. They're looking pretty good at the moment actually. Uh, just only a few weeks away from harvest. Some more lettuces here under cover. People are always asking me what the coke cans are. Well it's pretty clear in these beds the coke cans are there to hold the netting up but this kind of also trains the birds and I think when I take the netting off the birds see the coat cans and assume there's bird netting or something there. Whatever it is, it seems to deter the birds from coming in and grubbing around in the beds and making a mess of them and the cats as well. So this is really our main bed down here. This is the new one we put in last year and we put in this grow frame here, which is for beans and peas, but it's also uh, for sort of nighttime decoration. It looks really lovely at night, uh, all lit up, and it's got spotlights on the top there which illuminate the grass so we can play ball games and whatever with the grandkids when it's dark. So we'll just shoot along here. It's got a little apple tree there, a few leeks there. Some carrots and potatoes there. Most of the potatoes are actually on the allotment in the polytunnel or the mini greenhouse, or they're actually in the conservatory. I think we've got enough potatoes in the ground now to last us well, well until August. And they're all broken surface. So down here, we've got the Coke cans deterring the birds and the cats. We've got Leela salad onions in here and then at the back here we've got our second succession of peas and these are a sugar snap variety then we've got some cabbages a few of which are going to seed but we don't mind actually cabbage seed heads are my favorite so that seed head is absolutely great i like that actually more than purple sprouting broccoli so we've got a few that are going to seed and a few that are hearting up 
we find that always happens. I'm not quite sure whether there's any way to prevent it. Um, but it doesn't matter to me one bit because we like loose leaf cabbage just as much as we like hearted cabbage and we like seed heads even more. So a little bit of chard there uh, left over from last year and some more peas. And again, these are a sugar snap variety. Last few grits of collards. Again, all going to seed. Everything goes to seed at this time of year, all the brassicas. So there's nothing to kind of worry about when that happens. It's perfectly natural. They're not bolting. Bolting is really when a plant goes to seed prematurely. These are just going to seed at their natural time. And uh, as I say, it's totally to be expected. Don't try and avoid it, embrace it. And in here, we've got more garlic. It's looking quite nice. This bed really doesn't get any sun at all in winter. So it's only just spring into life really, as it starts to get some sun in spring. And then we've got some more lila salad onions here. But this bed is interplanted with parsnips at every gap here. And so those should be up in a couple of weeks time, probably by the time of the next tour. And again, Coke cans serving as a deterrent. So I really like interplanting alliums and parsnips mainly because of the timing. You know, these salad onions will be out of the ground um, in sort of May, early June time. And that gives the parsnips free reign in this bed for all of that time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a great intercrop. I do main crop onions as well, uh, interplanted with parsnips. And I also interplant uh, salad onions and main crop onions into beetroot. So, and lettuce actually. Over here we've got the new strawberry bed. This is my main crop strawberry bed. Doesn't get much sun at this time of year. So progress is slow, but that's kind of the way I like it because I've got my first early strawberries in the polytunnel, which are in flower now. And uh, then I've got my second earlies and my ever bearing on the allotment. And so these, I want to come a bit late. Uh, so sort of late July. And then the ever bearing ones kind of come in in August. So it's working quite nicely. And then this is my main backyard fruit bed. So I've got a mix here of gooseberries and blueberries all the way down there. And I've just weeded and mulched and fertilized all of those. And these are field beans at the moment, pumping nutrients into the ground. And these beds will all be cleared and replaced by a whole range of different brassicas, mainly red cabbages and cauliflowers and calabrese for harvest in autumn, really. And then we've got the summer fruit in raspberries along the back wall there. About 10 trees in this little garden. And this is one of the cherry trees. I'm a massive fan of cherries. So uh, we used to have an apple tree here, but it blew down in the wind. So a couple of years ago, we put this cherry tree in. It's doing quite nicely. Got my mini greenhouse. It's just full of leeks at the moment. That's my fleece that I'm using to protect the potatoes because we're getting quite a hard frost uh, at night at the moment. And I think that is pretty much everything that's going on in the back garden. So I actually grew up uh, with an orchard with about 50 trees in it. We had a really long garden. It was just a modest little um, semi-detached house. We had this massive garden for some strange reason that I never properly understood. And so we had 50 trees, plum trees, apple trees, uh, pear trees, etc. No cherry trees, unfortunately. And it also had loads of gooseberry bushes. And my favourite gooseberry bush I dug up when I left home and brought it with me. It's in the front garden at the moment. I just took cuttings from it. So these cuttings are from a bush that is well over 60 years old, probably more like 70 years old. 
and it's amazing it's an amazing variety and I just potted one up for my mum who will be very pleased because that was her childhood garden we'll drive with all trees and potatoes so we've got apple 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 cherry 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 pear cherry that cherry is in flower and because it's a bit frosty I've kind of just put a little bit of fleece up to try and protect the flowers from the frost this is where we do all of our potatoes or where we're doing them all this year we did about a third of them here last year and it worked out really well we found that potatoes benefit from a bit of shade and so this area still gets a decent amount of sun but it doesn't get sun all day long and the potatoes here really thrived we've still got a few left here uh, just enough to see us through until sort of the middle to the end of April when our new season potatoes will be ready and there's all the compost for the potatoes so I mainly use the spent potato compost for my early potatoes and for mulching the beds and then I put fresh potatoes in for my main crops so this year from about here we will have potatoes all the way down the drive uh, probably about 20 containers full and the benefit of that is rainwater coming down here which will go into a dip tank here which makes watering the potatoes and the trees with rainwater really easy and then the front garden is looking a little bit bare but uh, still looking quite nice got loads of flowers out in here we've got some overwintered onions there those are tough ball we will have uh, we've got some collects there at the back uh, we've got another apple tree there and some chard and then pretty much everything else is just bare beds waiting for new season crops to go in so i'm really excited to get this planted and looking lovely again but it doesn't look too bad at the moment so hope you like this quick video my name is steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and i'll see you soon